that fine tobacco, smiled and rich, a blend that you will like. A flying saucer came to Earth, so ends a mystery. For out jumped 20 men who said smoke L S M F T. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, are you happy with your present cigarette? I ask because a recent 38 city survey shows that millions of smokers are not happy with their present brand. Now, if you're one of these unhappy smokers and you want complete smoking enjoyment, switch to Lucky Strike. You see, fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you that happy blending of perfect mildness and rich, true taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, friends, for complete smoking enjoyment, for everything you want in your cigarette, be happy, go lucky, make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny and his gang are in New York City. And why? Because in one half hour from now, our little star will do his second television show. But let me take you back a few hours and to the place where Jack is staying. The Acme Plaza Hotel. Acme Plaza, every room has a private air wick. <laughs> what? Okay, I'll reserve a room for you, Mr. Jones. But you'll have to send a $5 deposit. Uh-huh, $5. And if you stay less than two weeks, we'll refund the difference. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, miss. What can I do for you, Fatso? I'd like to see Mr. Benny. Would you mind ringing his room? Oh, I'm sorry, but Mr. Benny isn't here. He's at the Sherry Netherlands Hotel. Jack Benny at the Sherry Netherlands? He's visiting Miss Livingston. She lives there. Oh, oh, oh. Well, uh, how long ago did he leave his room? I don't know. But he must have left in a hurry. He didn't even make his bed. <laughs> well, maybe I can catch up with him. Goodbye. <laughs> well, it was a long walk, but there it is. The Sherry Netherlands. What a beautiful hotel. Mary told me it has 900 rooms and all above the street. <laughs> 900 rooms. Looks classy, but I don't know how they get business. They don't even have their rates painted on the awning. <laughs> Gee, look at this lobby. I wonder what room Mary is in. Uh, pardon me, clerk. Can you tell me what room Miss Livingston is in? Why, certainly. Miss Livingston is in room 3406. That's on the 34th floor. Oh, thank you. Where's the stairway? <laughs> stairway? Why don't you take the elevator? Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. Going up. Coming. <laughs> floor, please. 34. Yes, sir. Thirty-fourth floor. So fast? It took longer than you think. You blacked out. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, thank you. Let's see. 3406. Gee, these carpets are so nice and thick. I think I'll take off my shoes and... Nah, somebody might see me. <laughs> 3402, 3404. Oh, here it is, 3406. Jack! Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. Hmm, I didn't expect you over so early. Say, Mary, this is a beautiful hotel. And you have a lovely, lovely... 
Mary, what do they call it when there's more than one room? A suite. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> a lovely suite. Jack, uh, let me show you the different rooms. Uh, this is the dinette. Gee. And look at the size of this clothes closet. Gosh. What's that door over there? Mary. In the same room. <laughs> Gee. Jack, you've been stopping at the Acme Plaza too long. Well, Mary, if I must say uh, so, pardon my... Pardon me, Miss Livingston. Uh, yes? I made the beds, vacuumed the rug, and emptied the waste paper basket. Is there anything else? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mrs. Broderick. I'll be in again in the morning, Miss Livingston. Goodbye. Uh, Jack, uh, you know the chambermaid? She lives at my hotel. <laughs> Which, gee, Mary, I, I can't get over this sweeter rooms. What are all those buttons on the wall? Uh, the first four are radio stations here in New York. Well, what's the fifth button? Well, downstairs in the dining room, they have continuous music. And if you press that button, you can hear it right in the room. They have a wonderful orchestra. Gee, I just can't get over it. You know, at the Acme Plaza, my room only has one button. What's it for? I think it's for the heat. Once I pressed it, and the bellboy brought me a bucket of coal. <laughs> But, Mary, your room is really amazing. You mean if I push that button, you'll get music from the dining room? Yes, go ahead. Try it. Okay. And now, our next selection will be Pizzicato from the Sylvia Ballet. <laughs> Switch to good old Lockies, that's the smoke you will like. F T <laughs> for me. O G. Be happy and go lucky, and you'll find that you. Enjoy your cigarette the way the others do. Oh, Ellis, 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 S, 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 M, F, 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 now we're through. See, Mary, this hotel really has everything. I just can't get over... What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Hmm? The telephone. I've got that in the same room, too. Gee. <laughs> Hello? Hiya, Livy. This is Phil. I'd have called you sooner, but I had a hard time finding the phone without a dial. Uh, Phil, I've been meaning to ask you, why do you always use a phone without a dial? Them operators love to hear my voice. <laughs> well, your voice does something to me, too, but fortunately, I have some Tums with me. <laughs> You want to talk to Jack? That'll be better. I can't get nowhere with you. Jack, it's Phil. Oh. Well, hello, Phil. What do you want? Well, Jackson, I know you're busy, but there's something I got to talk to you about. What is it? Well, the guy who plays the harp with the New York Philharmonic Orchestra is begging me to take him to Hollywood and let him join my band. Phil. Phil, did you say that the harp player of the Philharmonic Orchestra wants to join your band? That's right. Well, for heaven's sake, take him. Take him. Well, I don't know, Jackson. I got to think it over. Think it over? What are you hesitating about? 
If he's with the symphony, he must be a great harpist. Well, that's what worries me. What? Any guy who can move his fingers that fast would be murder in a poker game. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, but what's more important, a poker game or good music? Jackson, there are moments when aces back to back are better than Beethoven back to back. <laughs> Phil, you don't even know who Bach is. He's the fella that makes all that beer. <laughs> I thought so. Now, look, Phil, I got to go over to do my television show, so goodbye. All right, goodbye. Oh, wait a minute, Jackson. Now what? Hey, did you hear about me winning that golf tournament at Pebble Beach? Yeah, it was marvelous. You shot a 76. How in the world did you sink that 40-foot putt? When I got to the green, I switched to a pool cue. <laughs> good, good. Goodbye, Phil. So long, Jackson. Mary. Now, did you ever see anybody like Phil? Here he's got a chance to get a great musician. He can't make up his mind with... Are you expecting anybody? No. Coming. Well, Dennis. Hello, sis. Sis? What do you hear from Mother? Mother? Close the door. Close the door. Dennis, what is this sis and mother business? To fool the house detective. <laughs> what? Kiss me, toots. <laughs> Dennis! Oh, you're here. Now, stop. Now, what makes you think a hotel detective would follow a silly kid like you? Well, he did. He did not. Oh, that's him now. Don't let him take me. Hide me, hide me. He'll send me up the river. I'm too young to die. Dennis. Oh, there you are. Officer, what did he do? He left his bicycle in the revolving door. <laughs> Oh, well, officer, he won't be up here long. In fact, with that window open, he may beat you down. <laughs> good. Now, Dennis, why don't you be a good boy and go? Okay, but first I... Hey, what are those buttons on the wall? Well, push the last one, Dennis, and you'll see. All right. Gee, music comes out. Yeah. Hey, I know that song. You do? Yeah, listen. More. Dennis, now here's your hat and go. Oh, I'm afraid to go. Maybe the hotel detective is still in the hall. Now, stop being silly. Oh, please, Mr. Benny, step out in the hall and see if he's there, huh? Dennis. Jack, humor him. Oh, all right. There's nobody out here. Dennis, why did you lock him out? Kiss me, toot. <laughs> Dennis, open that door. Oh, that settles it. I'm through with dames. <laughs> Dennis, why did Goodbye. You... Goodbye, goodbye. What a crazy kid. Say, Mary, if we want to have dinner before my television show, we better go now. Okay, I'll get my coat. While you do that, I better call Rochester to the theater and see if everything is ready. Hello, Mr. Benny. 
nice dressing room. Hello, Rochester. Oh, oh, oh hello, boy. Rochester, I called you to find out if everything is going along all right. Yeah, and boss, you should see your dressing room. You can hardly get in here. It's so full of flowers. Well, isn't that nice? A lot of them, huh? Boss, there's so many flowers here for you, it's good to hear your voice again. <laughs> Gee, who are they from? Oh, practically everybody. There are bouquets here from Mr. Paley, Dinah Shore, Fred Allen, Ethel Merman. Fred Allen? He sent me a bouquet? Yeah, and he left a card with it. I'll read it to you. Yeah, let me hear it. To Jack from Fred. Roses are red, violets are pink. On radio, you're bad, but on television, good luck. <laughs> Good luck. He had another finish, but I talked him out of it. <laughs> well, were there any other calls for me? Well, before I left your hotel room, a fella came from Cottage Magazine. He said they were going to do a story about you, and he asked me some questions. Well, what did he ask you? Well, first he wanted to know your approximate salary. Uh-huh. Then he wanted to know how long you've been making it. Uh-huh. Then he got to the question that for years has been a burning issue in the public mind. What question? Could you possibly be as cheap in person as you are on the radio? Uh-huh. When he hit me with that one, I had to think fast. <laughs> what did you tell him? I told him you were such a lavish spender, you was known from coast to coast as Diamond Jim Benny. Oh, good, good. Then I told him you threw your money away like you were allergic to green ink. Atta boy, Rochester. And I just about had him convinced when in walked the man. What man? The man you rent your other twin bed to. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Of all the times for him to come in. Well, Rochester, do you think the man from Collier's will write a good article about me? Oh, I think so, boss. He even wanted a picture of you. So I gave him the one of you shaking hands with the King of England. Oh, swell. Good, good. But the picture was too big, so they had to cut it down a little. Gee, I hope they didn't cut out the king. Oh, his majesty's all right, but your hand looks like it's coming out of a wall. <laughs> well, that's better than nothing. Well, goodbye. I'll see you at the studio. Goodbye. Well, I'm ready, Jack. Good, let's go. You know, Mary, I can't get over what a nice hotel this is. You know, you get such a beautiful view from way up here. Yeah. Hurry, there's the elevator. Down, please. Watch your step, Mary. Main lobby. Uh, come on, Jack. Jack! <laughs> You'll have to wait a minute. He blacked out again. <laughs> I did not. I'm waiting for my hair. <laughs> there it is. Let's go. Come on. Jack, there's a little French restaurant just around the corner we can walk. Okay. Gee, there's sure are a lot of people in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should have called for a reservation. I didn't think of it. Well, maybe you could get a table if you gave the head waiter a tip. Well... Uh, give him five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you're cute. <laughs> you wait here. I'll go talk to the head waiter. <coughs> Excuse me. Oui, monsieur? Uh, I'm in a hurry. I'd like a, a table for two. Oh, I'm sorry, monsieur, but all the tables, they are taken. Oh. Well, look, I'm in a hurry. I've got to do a television show tonight. I am terribly sorry, monsieur, but uh, I am sure if you would like to wait, it will not be too long. Hmm. Well, Captain, come here a minute. Oui? Up to near moi un table, and je vous recompense. I do not understand. <laughs> Why not? You're French, aren't you? Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I put this on for the robes. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, well, look, look. I've got to have I a... am so sorry, monsieur. There are no tables. <laughs> well, all right. 
Did you get a table, Jack? No, let's go to some other... Hey, Mary, look who's sitting over there. Where? In the corner. It's Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., and he's all by himself. I'll ask him if we can sit with him. But, Jack, if he's eating by himself, maybe he prefers to be alone. Don't be silly, Mary. He'd be glad to have company. Come on, let's, let me do the talking. Hey, Mary, what a surprise. Look who's here. Huh? Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Well, if it isn't Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. You know, Jack, this, this is a funny place. You say, well, if it isn't Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and everybody in the restaurant applauds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Say, Doug, this is quite a surprise running into you. What are you doing here in New York? Oh, I'm here to see some shows. Guys and dolls call me madam. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of investing in one of the new ones. Well, isn't that a coincidence? I've got some money invested in South Pacific. No, you lucky fella. How much money have you got in it? Oh, it's not much. Really not worth talking about. No, I'm interested, Jack, really. H how much have you got invested in South Pacific? Eight dollars and eighty cents. <laughs> <laughs> that was for the tickets. Tickets? So much just to see it? <laughs> uh, Doug, we're sorry we interrupted you. And no, no, Mary, look, Doug, we're in a spot. You see, all the tables are taken and we're in a hurry. Would you mind if we joined you? How can he say no? You're already eating his rolls. <laughs> There's enough for both of us. Sure, sure. Come on, sit down. Here, I'll make room for you, Mary. Here. Thank you. Now, Jack, I'll move over so you can... Oh, just get... sit still, Doug. You needn't move for me. I'll squeeze right in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Doug. I knocked over the pitcher and spilled the water on you. Oh, that's all right. I was expecting it. Huh? Oh. Well, here, Doug. Let me hand you my napkin so you can... Whoops! <laughs> Knocked over the ketchup bottle. <laughs> Some splashed on your coat there. You know, Jack, I've been sitting here eating for 30 minutes. You've been in here 10 seconds. And you've got more on me than I've got in me. <laughs> well, I, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to... Doug. Doug, why are you smearing the mustard on your sleeve? Well, you're in a hurry. I thought I'd save you the trouble. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Eh? Uh, may I take you all to Mademoiselle? Yes. He I'll... meant me. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'll just have a club sandwich and a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, yes, Mademoiselle, and yours, Monsieur? Gee, I don't know what to have. What's that you're eating, Doug? It looks delicious. Oh, it's, uh, this is something my mother always used to make for me. It's my favorite dish. What is it? Matzo ball soup. <laughs> oh. oh, waiter, I'll have a club sandwich, too, and, and coffee. Very good, monsieur. By the way, Doug, I saw your latest picture, The Great Manhunt, and it's certainly an exciting mystery. Oh, thank you, Mary. Now, you made that picture over in England, didn't you, Doug? Yeah, yeah. You can tell because the scenes in the English slums were so realistic. You must have searched all over London to find such a run-down place. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, that was the only scene that was shot here. <laughs> Me here in New York? Yeah, at a place called the Acme Plaza. <laughs> well, that's a coincidence. I... Jack, shut up! <laughs> Oh, what's wrong? Uh, nothing, nothing. You're eating. <laughs> oh, say, Jack, what, what are you doing here in New York, anyway? Well, I'm here for a television show. I'm going right down to the studio from here. I think it's going to be good, too. I'm having John L. C. Savoni and two special guest stars, Frank Sinatra and Faye Emerson. Well, that sounds exciting. You, you brought your entire radio cast to New York, too, didn't you? Yes, I did. How'd you know? Well, I ran into Phil Harris at the Stork Club. You did? Well, if I know Phil, he had his foot up on the rail. No, as a matter of fact, he had his head there. <laughs> well, as long as he was comfortable. Here comes our food, Jack. Oh, yes. Jack. 
Gee, that sandwich was good. Yeah. Hey, look what time it is. I better get the check. Waiter! Waiter, our check. Waiter! Waiter! Jack, he, he sees you. Get off the table. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm in such a hurry. I don't know what I'm doing, you know. Excuse me for interrupting, but I happen to have a snapshot of you, Mr. Benny. Would you mind autographing it? Oh, I'd be happy to. There you are, Jack Benny. Oh, thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. Oh, wait a minute, lady. This is Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. Don't you want his autograph? No. But 30 years ago, I would have. <laughs> Jack, look what time it is. Gee, look, Doug, I've got to run over to the studio for my show. Perhaps we can have lunch sometime while I'm Here in... is the check, gentlemen. Oh, thank you, Pierre. No, no, Doug, let me take it. After all, it was your table and Mary and I barged in. So I insist on paying it. No, no, Jack. I, I'd feel better if I paid it. Well, if your health is involved, go ahead. <laughs> well, I've got to run along and... Gee, my hands are kind of sticky. Where's my napkin? Oh, here it is. Hmm, I can't pull it up. What's the matter with this napkin? You've got my shirt tail. <laughs> Oh, well, here, I'm through with it. <laughs> well, so long, Doug. Goodbye, Jack. Uh, oh, Pierre. Yes, Monsieur Fairbanks? Do you have a television set here? Oui, Monsieur, there's one in the bar. Well, have him tune in to CBS immediately so I can see Jack Benny's television show, will you? Uh, oh, Monsieur, are you a big fan of Jack Benny? No, but that Faye Emerson, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I didn't have to work, I'd go with you. <laughs> moment, but first, let's take off on a musical roundup of the old Wild West. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike, yeah. We've rounded up a milder smoke out on the Lone Prairie. Our brand is known throughout the land, it's LSMFT. Luckies are my favorite brand at home or on the range. When she finds a smoke like this, a gal's a fool to change. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike, yeah. Friends, are you happy with your cigarette? Here's why I ask. A recent 38-city survey shows that millions of smokers are not happy with the brand they're now smoking. Now, if this is true of you, and you want complete smoking enjoyment, switch to Lucky Strike. You see, fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco always gives you both perfect mildness and rich, true tobacco taste. Everything you want in a cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. Yes, every Lucky you light always gives you complete smoking enjoyment, that happy blending of perfect mildness and rich taste. So be happy, go lucky. Start with a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike, today. Thanks very much, Douglas Fairbanks, for appearing on my program. Good night, folks. Thank you.